Hello everyone, just Goran here and welcome back to another Planet Zoo real life inspiration video and today we are looking at the adorable Asian small cloth otter. It's another long one today but luckily since other habitats aren't that big we'll be able to go through it relatively quickly uh, but because it's a lot of habitats I have divided this video into four segments. We're going to start off with what I consider to be the most inspirational or otherwise unique standalone otter habitats then we're looking at all the mixed habitats and then we are going to look at the more average and even the absolute bottom of the barrel concrete box type habitat. So let's dive in. <laughs> and kicking off segment one, the unique inspirational habitats is the Park Amersfoort with their beautiful immersive habitats. In this case, the dock kind of going through the glass over here, creating the same area on the inside as well as the outside of the habitat, immersing you into it. Um, we've got a lot of detailed theming as well with a little kind of like pier-like buildings in the background. Brickwork, rockwork, all sorts of things. It's honestly a bit of a mess, but it works somehow. It's, it's a very unique habitat. I mean, I really haven't seen anything like this. And yeah, we've got more glass viewing area. There's also a small underwater viewing area all the way on the left, which I don't think uh, I recorded that well. And there's even a little stream, a little waterfall over here at the water section so yeah i yeah just lovely habitat it's uh it's quite nice and that is it <laughs> we're going through this relatively quickly so we're moving on to the next zoo and that is burger zoo we are in burger's bush which is a huge tropical uh indoor area and just look at this habitat i mean is this a habitat or is this just a jungle i don't even know anymore we got the, the stream running through it we got the otter sitting over here just making the most adorable noises um, but yeah this habitat works because there's probably like a moat or, or some kind of spacing in the back that we can't see but it just blends with the jungle background so well and it just looks like it's one environment and it's absolutely beautiful and yeah that is that's Burgers Bush for you, to be honest. The entire place is like that. Just absolutely awesome. Anyway, next up is the Otter Creek of Wildlands Adventure Zoo in Emma. Uh, we've got this awesome wooden bridge with some bamboo, some rope, really cool. But the real reason I put it into the inspirational segment is this amazing rock work all around. It's really quite, I, I don't think I've seen rock work like this in many places. It looks really, really cool and unique, very, yeah, rivery. It, it's like it flows through the habitat almost and yeah you got some interesting shelters um but yeah that is pretty much <laughs> all there is to it oh yeah we can see the otters having a little nap over here in a little basket so yeah we saw those as well oh, but yeah just some nice green areas between the rock work as well but that is it for wildlands so we are moving on to the next zoo this is the zoo of cologne and we are in the rainforest building where you have a bunch of free roaming birds but also over here there is an otter habitat kind of <laughs> hidden between the plants here uh yeah i didn't see any otters in here it seemed kind of empty but you've got a mesh viewing area you also have a little bit of underwater viewing doesn't look like there's any water in there which kind of makes me think that I, I don't even know if there's any otters in there at the moment but yeah just look at all that amazing rock work i think it looks really really cool really unique just yeah, really awesome. <laughs> they also have another otter habitat in this zoo uh, for the uh, Eurasian otter, which I kind of wanted to show as well, but I figured this video is long enough as it is. For So maybe in some future, if, if it's ever added to the game, of course I'll show it, but maybe once we run out of animals to, uh, to show in two years from now, uh, I'll make more videos on other animals as well, but for now this is what you're getting. Uh, you also get an elevated view of this habitat as you um, continue through the house. Part of the house was closed, so I think you're supposed to be coming from there, but I came from the other side. But yeah, that's it for Cologne. Now we are in Sea Life Blankeberge, and this was, was a unique enough habitat to show, I think. It was, it was pretty interesting. You've got a nice little a grassy lawn. A, can't actually tell if this is uh, fake grass or not. I think even said it was. It just looks very trimmed. There's also definitely some real grass in there. Maybe that's throwing it off. If so, then it just blends in really well. Uh, but yeah, you got these nice little wooden walls, very cutesy decorated uh, with many different viewing points. There's a little stream running through the habitat and you also get to go behind here and get an uh, indoor 
view at the backstage of the otter, which is actually a lot more common than I thought. As I was making this video, I realized that there's actually a lot of zoos that do show you uh, the backstage, as we'll uh, see later on in the video. So yeah, that's really, really cool. And over here is also a little underwater viewing area, and we can see the otters lying in the back over there, chilling on the edge of the water, being cute as always. And yeah, we got some nice rock work as we look underwater as well. It looks quite awesome. I like all the straight edges and things. And then here we got more of that uh, wooden wall going all the way around. There's also those like little bubble viewing areas, which are very fun. Um, give you really an <laughs> a feeling you're in the habitat. These are like very small, like, they barely fit your head. Uh, I, I think they're mostly for children probably. But yeah, some education about all the different species of otter, but that is pretty much it for sea life Blankenberg. So let's look at another sea life. This is sea life Scheveningen. And I was actually pretty pleasantly surprised at the amount of variety between these two. Like, they're very different habitats. We do get another backstage view. This one is a lot more <laughs> clinical, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, it's just their backstage. On the outside, however, we do have a lot more awesome little naturalistic rock work. We see there the entrance into their backstage from this side as well. Um, but yeah, there was a little waterfall. They have a little pool over there. Um, the entire habitat is kind of... There's this anti-climbing thing with the out-sticking uh, uh, planks, which looks really, really cute. Uh, there's all these little tunnels for the otters to go through and climb through. Um, yeah, this is a relatively small habitat. I mean, this, this zoo does not have a lot of space in the outer area. Um, they've got this and the penguin habitat and then that's it. Um, but yeah, it, they got they crammed it so full of details, especially this other habitat. I think that's kind of admirable and definitely a little bit inspiring, which is why I put them here in this segment. Also, I kind of wanted to keep the two sea lives together just so you can get that uh, sea life comparison going. I can't wait to visit more sea life aquariums so I can even uh, compare them even more because yeah there is tons of them around the world which is just crazy but yeah that's it for sea life next up we have Dierenrijk and this one I was really debating whether to put it in the more average section uh, of this video or not um, because overall I think the enclosure is pretty average you got these kind of straight walls you got some interesting viewing points over here with the, the glass and such and you can get some really cool views of the others when they're uh, up close to you. You also got a very nice large pond for them to swim in, which is really quite nice. Um, but yeah, overall the feeling of it is just a, a bit average. The only thing that put it into the inspiration category for me was this little bridge over here. That's just a little extra special thing that makes this habitat really fun and, and interesting. And yeah, you can get so close to the otters here, it's crazy. Um, I definitely expect more signs of like, don't touch him, because if you reach over, you can very easily get to them. But hey, uh, we will only abuse this power for making cute other videos like this. So <laughs> definitely don't touch them, because they will bite you. So yeah, that's it for Dierenrijk. Let's move to the last zoo of the uh, extra inspiring <laughs> category, uh, which is artists. This is also one that I debated putting in the average category just because of its size. Like, it's really quite small and not that great. It definitely is in need of an upgrade. Um, I do hope the otters get a better place at this zoo eventually. Um, but that doesn't mean that the habitat isn't unique and inspiring in a way. Uh, it's a completely indoor habitat with the glass viewing and it's got some nice like wooden things and yeah, I just, I do like the aesthetic of it. It just needs to be like twice the size and then it'll be pretty much perfect. So yeah, that is it for artists already. So now we're moving on to the next category, which is mixed habitats. And the first few mixed habitats that we're taking a look at is um, Asian small clot otters mixed with orangutans. And I actually never realized that this was a thing you could do until the Asian small clot otters were added to the game and they had the uh, interspecies enrichment with the orangutan. I was like, oh, oh, that's a thing you can do. And yeah, lo and behold, uh, we have three zoos to look at today that actually mix the otters with orangutans. So now we are in Paradisa, which have two different orangutan enclosures for different kinds of like, you have the, uh, the Bornean and the Sumatran orangutan. Uh, and this one, I don't know which of the two it is, but 
that's not relevant. We're here for the otters anyway. So you got the orangutan enclosure, uh, clearly seen by all the climbing and such. Uh, but there's also plenty of water around in the moat, and that is for the others. Uh, I could notice that there's also some electric wiring around this part, which is the outcome of this like waterfall thing. So I guess the others can also get into here. Um, but yeah, I guess that's the main thing that you need to take into account when you're adding others to your orangutan habitat is yeah, like also make the moat um, other proof make sure that the others can't get out so that means uh, steep walls around it or hot wire and stuff like that but yeah that is kind of the main thing but yeah this is it for the habitat and that will be it for paradise so next up we have zoo plankendal which uh, last year opened their new orangutan enclosures and there is also an other habitat kind of integrated into that so over here what we're looking at is the kind of area that's just for the otters this is uh, where they will m be spending most of their time anyway i think they had some young at this moment uh, which is <laughs> what all the squeaking is about as well uh, but yeah they've got this really cool little stream running through and yeah they've got their own little secluded area with their own little viewpoint over there. I don't think it's the greatest viewpoint because you're just looking straight down on them. I actually much prefer this viewpoint from over here where you can just kind of see everything and yeah and it is a little bit far away though so that's the kind of the, the difficulty there um, but that's not all. I mean these are otters they can swim so over here we got an orangutan island that is technically also their habitat and this water continues on all the way you know so they can get all the way back here to this other orangutan island all the way back here to this other orangutan island and even further and this entire perimeter has to be made other proof like even back here they could technically come i don't think they will venture this far from their own little safe area uh, but technically yes they could swim all the way over here and yeah over here this is where the kind of water transitions to the visitor side where you have got some terraces and stuff and uh, yeah, even though they had to add a little wall with some hot wire in the water. But yeah, that's it for Plankendal. Next up we have Zoom Erlebeniswelt. And here we have uh, also a kind of an indoor rainforest building. Um, with um, the indoor area for the orangutans. Which is this netted off area. And I'm pretty sure the others are only in the indoor area. I don't think the others can come outside. I think the outdoor enclosure is just for the orangutans and the other monkey in here. Um, but yeah, this is shared with the orangutan we can see over here, as well as the grey langur or the Hanuman langur. I totally butchered that. Uh, yeah, but here we can see the langur and uh, right uh, underneath him is a little otter running around. So yeah, they are indeed sharing their space and right now the otters are not really in the otter <laughs> area, I would say. Uh, definitely what we saw before with all the water and such uh, is what is made for the otters and over here there's even more of that so there's even a little slide a little water stream running down um, I really would love to see an otter go down one of those one day <laughs> it would be the best thing ever but yeah um, there's some more really nice rock work all around and you get these cool views of the enclosure we get a much better look at the slide from here as well and yeah you can see the netting going all the way around keeping the orangutans and the langurs in um, yeah that's of course not there for the otters uh, that's the thing with these mixed habitats it's uh, you gotta take care of the needs of all the different animals so from uh, this other viewpoint we can see there is another slide going even further down and this is kind of the lowest level and uh, this is where we get to the backstage of the otters as well, which is around the corner from here. You can see it, it's in this line of brick building over here. Let's have one more look into the enclosure over here. There's uh, some steps that the otters I think could also get up to if they wanted to. <laughs> I've never seen an otter at an elevation like that, but I think it's, it's technically possible. I mean, they can get up these other rock steps, so why not those but anyway let's look at that little backstage over here uh, it's very similar to other things we've seen with some branches and some straw bedding um, where they have made their little nests into and yeah that is the backstage and that will be it for zoom erlebeniswelt so we are moving on to the next zoo which is safari park beeksberg which has a very interesting mix uh, with the otters they are sharing their habitat with the sloth bear and the corsac fox so 
over here we can see an otter running around the habitat. And yeah, I will say that this habitat was definitely not built for the otters. Uh, they were definitely a, a little bit more of an afterthought. Bakes of used to have a separate otter enclosure with a nice little stream and a waterfall. Um, but yeah, now they are sharing it with the bears and the Corsac Fox, as you can see. Um, yeah, so this is definitely a bear habitat that has otters in it and not really an otter habitat d designed specifically for the otters, I feel like. Just the otters make use of the moat and the other water sections, but that is really just about it. Now, that doesn't mean that it's a bad habitat, of course. Uh, you still get some great views of the otters if you're lucky that they come close to the glass, as we'll see in a moment. Uh, yeah, right over here, in fact. Uh, so yeah, if you're lucky, you get some really nice views of them and their adorable little antics. Uh, but yeah, it's just uh, the way it is. So next up, we have the Aachener Tierpark uh, in Germany. And this is a pretty nice habitat as well, I will say. There's a nice little stream running through it. Um, we've got these interesting glass uh, fences going all the way around for some reason, even the side of the habitat where visitors don't come, which uh, is an interesting choice. I, I wonder why. <laughs> but uh, the interesting thing about this habitat is the um, species that the otter is mixed with, because this is actually a raccoon otter enclosure, which uh, is very interesting. Those uh, are not two species that really share a range in the wild, except for when they're invasive, I guess. So, yeah, interesting choice. I, I, hmm, okay, cool. I mean, I have nothing against raccoons, so um, cool stuff. Uh, way to go. Uh, good job, Agnes uh, But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to see over here. So we are going to move on to the next zoo, which is Zoo de Lille. And we've got another um, arboreal animal mixed with the otter over here. I mean, do we though? Because I spent half an hour sitting in front of this enclosure hoping to see the binturong uh, but all i saw were the otters so i'm actually convinced that this is not a mixed enclosure at all and uh, this is uh, just an otter enclosure the binturongs don't exist because uh, you know i never see them <laughs> so yeah it's it's a decent enclosure you've got some nice uh, little stream at the bottom over there for the otters a little waterfall, some logs for them to hide in, and yeah, plenty of climbing at the top for the Binturong, supposedly. <laughs> so yeah, that is um, pretty much it here, and we're also going to take a quick backstage peek around the corner in a second. But yeah, just uh, enjoying that river for a second. It's a little bit of a shame the, the mesh in this enclosure makes it a bit more difficult to film the others. Um, it is interesting to see, though, that the mesh kind of stops at a certain height where it goes to regular chain link. I guess that's because the otters might be able to maneuver through that mesh or through that chain link if it were at the bottom as well. Um, but yeah, it was really hard to focus my camera on the otters when they were sitting in front of the mesh. Uh, we can also see a nice little larger uh, bath in the back there. A bit, a bit much concrete, but overall good... Uh, Good enclosure for them. And yeah, here's that backstage peak that I promised you guys. Always nice to see. So yeah, that's it for Zoo de Lille. And now we are moving on to the uh, Zoo of Dunkirk. Biotopia, it's called. And this is what I always thought was like the most common mix with otters. But there's actually not that many to look at. So I guess it's not as common as I thought. And with this is a, um, a red panda and Asian small cloth otter enclosure. And we can also see over here uh, another nice little backstage peek. Uh, there's some like smiley faces and frowny faces in front of it. I don't know what those are about exactly. Maybe it's like where you should be standing uh, if you want to get a good view or if you want to make the otters happy. I don't quite know. I don't speak French. <laughs> but um, what we do get over here is some nice views of the uh, otters and red pandas. I will say, as much as I like the look of this exhibit... Oh yeah, and there's a little baby as well. <laughs> These otters were out and about, running around, um, grabbing nest materials and just gathering everything you need for a nest. So like this one was grabbing little bits of grass and uh, what else do you need for a nest? Um, let me think. Oh yeah. Oh, of course you need a baby for your nest. So yeah, make sure to grab that as well. Good job. <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah, as I was saying, uh, 
as much as I like the look of this enclosure, like it's very green, it's very lush, you got all these flowers and things, I will say I don't know why it's this far down. Like, I don't think either of these animals need barriers this high up. So, yeah, I would have preferred it if this habitat wasn't in a pit as much as it is, if it was just a little bit more on the viewer level. Especially because red pandas like to be above the visitor level, um, and they aren't able to in this enclosure. But yeah, that's it for Biotopia. Next up we have Zoo Park Overloan, which also have an Asian small clawed otter and red panda mix. And yeah, this enclosure is definitely more on the average side. It's very flat. You do get a nice little hill in the back which hides the fence and kind of um, creates that immersion that the bamboo is standing in the enclosure even though it's standing behind the fence. And here we got an otter enjoying a little bit of uh, fish, I guess. And yeah, they've got a nice little lake area which the red pandas can climb over, which is pretty fun. It's a cool, cool little feature of this enclosure. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's uh, kind of just a flat, empty field. Well, not completely flat because you got the little hill. But what's also nice to point out over here is that that over there is the backstage of the otters. They do not need that much space at all backstage wise. So that's really cool <laughs> for your own projects like you don't need to make a huge backstage room for these guys a little a little box is technically enough so yeah that's it for the others over here in zoo park overloan and next up we have pakawi park this is the last zoo in our mixed enclosure segment and for once pakawi is not at the end of the video as a sad down note on it being the worst thing ever um <laughs> because this enclosure even Though it's in this segment mainly because it has a, a species mix. Uh, this enclosure is actually quite nice, I want to say. Uh, it's, it's definitely not as bad as the things we will see at the end of this episode. But it is a mixed enclosure. And what do you mix with your Asian small clawed otters? Well, as I said, uh, red pandas are a pretty common mix. They, they, they're cool together. Oh... But we're, we're Pakawi, we're a shitty zoo, we can't get red pandas. So, you know what, let's just throw in a red rough lemur, why not? Yeah, that'll, that'll work. <laughs> I, it's, it's less impactful now that we have also seen a raccoon mix. But still, it is absolutely hilarious to me <laughs> that they threw a red, red rough lemur with their otters. Uh, also worth noting, uh, this enclosure over here, though I didn't see any otters in it at the time. Uh, I think this is an otter enclosure, so I don't know why they're in that other one, because this is definitely a lot nicer of an enclosure. Like, this is a, actually, a, I want to say, a really cool, beautiful enclosure, uh, especially for Pakawi standards. But yeah, that's it for Pakawi. So next up, we have Taman Indonesia, and yeah, we are starting on the more average enclosure uh, wow, segment God. of this video. Um, this, which doesn't mean that these are bad enclosures, right? Average is still good. Like, welfare-wise, I think none of these enclosures are bad in the slightest. They have lots of space, water, uh, everything the otters need. It's just that, yeah, inspiration-wise, I think it's just a lot of similar features with the corrugated metal fences or concrete or just a bunch of rocks in the enclosure. Um, yeah, but... Hey, still cute little enclosures for the otters, so we're gonna go through these just one by one and not spending too much time on either one, just uh, yeah, seeing what they have to offer. So next up we have Mont Sauvage and over here we've got yeah, quite a simple enclosure. It's, it's very spacious, very nice, but it's just a, a, a grassy field with a pond in it and that's pretty much it. There is one little cool aspect about this enclosure. Um, well, actually, two things, I guess, if you count the fact that you can see the Arctic wolves um, in the back there, which doesn't have a lot to do with Asian small cloud artists, so I guess that's maybe not really a, a complete feature. But that little waterfall over there, uh, streaming under the bridge that you're walking over over here, uh, into that lake, it's a, that's a cool little feature. But other than that, yeah, this is it for the other exhibit. And uh, I didn't really see any others here, so that's... Uh, that's all there is to it. <laughs> Next up, we have Castile Park Born, which, um, yeah, again, corrugated metal in the back, a bit of a concrete pool, simple fence in the front over here, nothing too inspirational, I want to say. 
it's just uh, just an average other enclosure, and that's not bad. It's it's just very decent. They have a big pool, cool stuff, some shells over there because that's what they tend to eat, and uh, yeah, a little backstage box over there, several of them even. And that's it for Castile Park Born. So let's move to the next zoo. This is uh, the Zonneglut, the animal sanctuary. And they also have quite a nice average other enclosure. Nice wooden fences around it. Pool in the middle. Just a uh, nice grassy field. Uh, but yeah, nothing too spectacular over here. The viewpoint is quite nice. Going kind of into the enclosure with this glass uh, viewing point. And yeah, here we can see more of that pond. Even got a little water stream going into it. Very nice. And, oh, one thing I almost forget. I keep forgetting to, <laughs> that this comes up. Uh, there's also another backstage view over here. So you can see the backstage of the others. Again, just a little small wooden box is all they need uh, to be happy. Next up, we have Zoo Kleve. Uh, this one, yeah, just very solid average enclosure. Nice little brick backstage over there. We can see the others enjoying some sand being a bit interesting uh, in their behavior here. Yeah, peeking out of their indoor area. Um, but yeah, this is the enclosure. Nice little hill in the middle. Uh, concrete barrier all the way around. Lots of glass viewing, which is uh, quite nice, especially for kids. I also noticed recently I took my grandparents to the zoo again and they have to go in a wheelchair. And there's a lot of habitats that are really difficult to view from a wheelchair. So that's why I have extra appreciation for glass viewing areas like this. Because yeah, it makes it a lot easier for people in wheelchairs to see uh, the enclosure as well. So the most average thing of this enclosure I want to say is the, the body of water over there. Just a plastic box with some rocks around it. <laughs> it's not, not spectacular. But yeah, that's it for the Zoo Kleve. And next up we have the Zoo Duisburg over here. This is quite a nice enclosure, I want to say, but yeah, again, just some wooden background, some rocks, some concrete, pool, um, yeah, stuff we've seen already a bunch in this video. Uh, what is nice is that this water kind of connects to the water on the other side, or at least it appears to connect to the water on the other side, which is the Aldebra Giant Tortoise enclosure. That's a, a nice bit of yeah, immersion there, um, but that's it for them. So next up we have Fauna Park Flaque over here which uh, very lush enclosure over here but again yeah all these concrete barriers in the back it is a bit uh, yeah not too inviting I guess <laughs> uh, and yeah, they have this small bit of water in the front over here it was currently being filled I think a little sign uh, you have Mork and Mindy in the others uh, but I will say that this enclosure is already outdated and I saw online uh, that this zoo has a new enclosure for their others so uh, I decided that for once, you know, I'll just take their video from their Facebook page uh, and show you guys the new enclosure, which definitely looks a lot nicer. There's more water, there's a little water stream, um, but I'd still say that this is a bit average with the, the corrugated metal background and such. But it's it's definitely still a nice enclosure and uh, yeah, I would say an upgrade. Looks like they got more others as well, not just Mork and Mindy anymore. <laughs> but yeah, that is it. For Fauna Park Flake, uh, I hope it's okay that I used some of their Facebook videos. Uh, I just wanted to not show outdated stuff, basically. So next up, we have Plaswijk Park. Uh, this is a zoo where I wasn't able to record a lot because this is also like a water playground. So there were like naked kids running around everywhere. Uh, but uh, I did record some of the enclosures over here uh, where no kids are in sight. Uh, and yeah, we've got a nice little other enclosure. Again, pretty average with the, the wooden slash metal backgrounds and some nice rocks, concrete kind of pools, stream running through it, uh, some barrel hiding holes, and yeah, just average good enclosure. And that's not the only one, they have a second other enclosure even over here, which, uh, yeah, similar elements and this uh, cool water stream all the way on the side uh, in this rock kind of formation thing. So yeah, definitely a decent enclosure. And now it's time for our final segment, the kind of bottom of the barrel stuff. We are in Besu, which has all the elements of the average enclosure combined with a bit less space. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of uh, the way this enclosure looks, to say the least. It's definitely not the worst, but it 
could be better. Um, next up we have Park Anemile de Bion, and uh, over here you get a nice indoor view of this concrete, dark concrete box, as well as the outdoor enclosure, which is just this concrete box. That's all it is. It's a concrete box with a little pool in front and a shelter thing. It's uh, it's not great. Uh, same similarly we, here we have Uiden Dierenpark de Pai in the Netherlands, which many consider to be the worst zoo in the Netherlands. Over here we have kind of the backstage uh, with a box in front, which is their indoor holding, and then yeah, this is the enclosure. It's just uh, a concrete slash wooden box with uh, a small pond. Uh, there's some slides. That's great. Look at that waterfall. Oh my god, that's that's a waterfall right there. Here we have Lukoshi inspecting the habitat just in disbelief at <laughs> what he's seeing. Um, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Uh, I don't have much else to say about it. I just hate it. <laughs> so uh, last up we have uh, Zizo and uh, in Zizo we also have an uh, interesting otter habitat. Over here we're looking at their kind of indoor holding uh, and then over here is their outdoor habitat. It's not a concrete box, it's a concrete circle with metal and glass viewing and some bamboo in the back. Uh, what is interesting is that you can see this little tunnel that goes from their backstage to their outdoor habitat. But yeah, this looks depressing <laughs> to say the least. Uh, I, I don't want to sugarcoat it. I just hate this. But yeah, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry to end it on all of these bad enclosures. But yeah, they exist and it's worth showing, I think. Uh, with an animal as popular as the otter that is in so many zoos, you're bound to have some enclosures that aren't as great as the others. So yeah, um, next video is going to be the Bactrian Camel, which is also a lot, so it'll be another long one. See you then!